Thank you, my dear Massa, for being our host for the closing session ah. of this amazing FII in Miami. Uh, I don't think Massa needs any introduction, but please, uh, since we have many people also watching, Massa Yossison is the representative director, corporate officer, chairman, and CEO of SoftBank, a group, a strategic investment holding company focused on driving the AI transformation information theory revolution, founded in 1981. And um, SoftBank and its subsidiary works in multiple areas, of course, AI, robotics, telecoms, internet services, and clean energy, and so far, and so on. But uh, let me start this conversation. I know lunchtime is soon, so we will uh, try to go as fast as we can, but there is a lot to say when we have Massa with us. So, my dear Massa, I know you for almost uh, 40 years now. Yeah. Uh, from the time I was working for IBM, and you keep surprising me literally every day, all the time. Oh, no, no. So, what is your magic to bring uh, and to keep together a diverse coalition of partners on massive projects like the one you just have announced with President Trump, the Stargate? So, how did you, how were you able to do it? Well, uh, first of all, I always feel that I have not achieved anything yet. Uh, I'm very ashamed of myself that I have wasted my time for so many years achieving so little. But my dream is big. My passion is big. I'm a small guy physically, but my <laughs> dream is big. I will come back about that. You, Harvard <laughs> Business Review just wrote something about you. <laughs> no, no. I, I, so, when your dream is big, you are always humble, you always are always hungry, you always wake up in the middle of the night and thinking about the solutions. So, that's where I am now still uh, working uh, with passion to make things happen. And I think timing is really coming now. Now is the time to go big. Tell us uh, a little bit more about Stargate and uh, how do you think Stargate project will influence this AI trajectory? Yeah, first of all, let me give you the big picture. Okay. Uh, Stargate will provide more chip, more compute. So how much more compute, how much more intelligence would there be? Stargate will provide at least 10x chip, number of chip per year. So let's say we provide 10x more chip. Each chip will be about 10 times more compute capability per chip. So 10 times 10. And then each model introduced by OpenAI become about 10x more capable. So 10 times 10 times 10. 1,000. 1,000x in one cycle. A second cycle coming every 12 months to 18 months. The so second cycle comes, 1,000x times 1,000x. That's a million x. The third cycle comes, that's another 1,000x. That's a billion x. So now you know, already OpenAI's uh, O3. O3, model O3 passed the exam for PhD on every subject. Mathematics, physics, you know, uh, medical, law, and everything. So, I don't know how many of you can pass PhD on five subjects. Even one subject is not easy. Okay? Five subjects by, by one person is super difficult. So, I think in a way, already, 
What is the definition of AGI? Already it is so smart. But just imagine that intelligence passed the exam of PhD becoming a million X in two cycles, a billion X in three cycles, and three cycles is coming in just a several years. So if you think, oh, Gen AI still has you know, some uh, uh, mistake in understanding, blah, blah. Oh, I am smarter than you, you know? Well, that thing, you are looking from downward from yourself into Gen AI. But that little thing is becoming a billion X smarter. How dare can you say, oh, you are much little thing? This is changing our common sense, drastically much more than you think, much quicker than you think. And it's exponential, it's not, people, most people think linear, the reality coming exponential. And when you discover, wow, most of you, too late. So, talking about this mega project action plan, so, as you know, AI-driven uh, industries are projected to contribute to 15.7 trillions to the global economy by literally tomorrow, by 2030. So how does Stargate ensure it captures and drives this value while maintaining a competitive edge? Yeah, well, competition is definitely becoming more and more stronger. So you have to go ahead, you have to be brave, you have to go all in. So some people say after the deep seek syndrome, right? Oh, you are overspending, Masa, you are spending $500 billion, you are, you are overspending, you know? You can save so much more by, by uh, uh, less spending. But I think, you are looking at wrong way. How much, how much uh, percent of GDP will be re replaced by a billion X smarter thing? I would say at least 5% within 10 years, and that 5% is $9 trillion, or if it's 10%, it's $18 trillion. So somewhere in between 5 to 10% of today's GDP will be replaced by this super intelligence. Well, if that's the amount of return, you shouldn't be scared of spending a few trillion dollars. If return is nine to 18 trillion dollar per year, why should you save? Why should you try to be efficient? For what? I don't get it. <laughs> you know, just a little difference make huge return on your market share. As of today, OpenAI is roughly 80% market share of every Gen AI, you know, produced. And OpenAI has 400 million active users per week now, which is 2x compared to several months ago. 2x. It's growing so fast. But you were talking about humility. So let's try to be humble. And, uh, <laughs> and how does Target plan to stay ahead, I would say, of uh, more adaptive AI initiatives? What will be your yeah. strategy to always be ahead? Two things, okay? So OpenAI, they continue to innovate with the model. Uh, amazing engineers, amazing engineers, amazing leadership by Sam, okay? So it's amazing group. The, their, the creativity of this innovation is amazing. And then, on top of that, we are trying to provide the compute with a massive investment. So my responsibility is to go all in, right? Invest, 
provide compute to Sam, to OpenAI, so that their innovative mind can be utilized by this massive power of compute. You know, President Trump has always this great uh, America's first. So let me ask you a very direct question. This target project, do you think it, it will become the backbone of a global AI infrastructure? Or it could create something more closed, an ecosystem which prioritizes US dominance? Well, center of innovation is definitely happening from US. The center of innovation is coming from Silicon Valley. That's the fact. The, all the chip, all the uh, intelligence, the innovation is happening there. So that's already a center. The NVIDIA has more than 90% market share, 95% market share of all the AI's compute. The OpenAI and all the GAFAs, they're providing uh, most of the intelligence. So that's the fact. And now, with President Trump, compared to the last administration who tried to limit the power of AI, Europe tried to limit the power of AI. I think it's wrong, okay? This is happening no matter what. And the China has already shown their passion, their capability. So this is not the time to slow down. This is time to go all in. Otherwise, somebody else will, will do it. So uh, it's, it's not about America trying to take away the other countries' opportunity. The other countries, like Europe or maybe some other country, try to limit their own future by themselves. I think that's wrong. Before criticizing, why do you give up your own future by yourself? <laughs> Let me... Uh, you know, I, knowing that we will have this great conversation, yesterday I say, oh, what are the last news about Massa? And I discovered an amazing article which I will share with you, because I know you don't read a lot, from the Harvard Business Review. You don't read the media. So let me just tell you the summary of the Harvard Business Review that was published a few days ago about you, because oh. you became now a case study in Harvard. <laughs> so Masayoshi Son, the billionaire founder and CEO of SoftBank, Japanese media technology conglomerate is often cast as a dreamer, financial engineer, and speculator. But this is what they say as a lesson for leaders. Turn adversity to advantage. Find a way to persist. Bridge east and west. Seek mentor and mentees. Go big or go home. <laughs> Don't let love outweigh logic. Beware mercenaries and focus on the future. Do you agree with this definition about how you were conducting your life? Yeah. Uh, I'm a dreamer. I'm a gambler. <laughs> <laughs> and very often, I bet wrong horse, like, like we work. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I learn. I learn from mistakes. And I would like to continue my, my spirits of challenging. So, at least, if I make a mistake by challenging too much, I don't regret. I, I would tell, oh, I was not smart enough, but I'm still challenging. If I regret by not challenging, 
That's when I really get, you know, upset about myself. So at least, you know, I would like to continue this. Someday, I will make a hit. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about dreamer, we know another dreamer who is also a doer, who you know very well. His wife is the current prince, Mohammed bin Salman. How were you able to convince him to invest years ago, I remember, so much with you and creating this great partnership with you? No, I didn't convince him. He already had the vision. He just needed to find somebody who shared the same vision. Another and, dreamer. Another dreamer, <laughs> okay? But, you know, he's so smart. He has a big vision. And I just happened to be at the right timing and uh, uh, get to know. And we didn't have to spend our effort to convince, as I said. He already had his own vision. We just met at the right timing. Masa, my last but, but, but I haven't still given him enough return. <laughs> I still owe him, you know. <laughs> I still owe him. Masa, last question. So many people are trying to enter in this AI, I would not say industry, I would say this AI world. What would be the advice to give to a young entrepreneur who would like to potentially shift from the current sector where he or she is working and to enter in the AI? What should be the first things to do and the keys to enter in the AI industry? Well, I have five grandkids, grandkids now, and my daughters ask, what should I tell to my kids? You know, they are six years old, 10 years old. Should, should I let them use, uh, you know, uh, chat GPT, right? So I said, no, no, don't let them use, let them live with it. Breathe with it, you know, dream with it, so that it become part of their life. And so don't try to limit oh, how many times you can use, don't use it for homework, blah, blah. Don't limit any of those. They are native, native kids with AI. So let them live with it. Use as much as possible, as aggressively as possible, and be part of that. Let them, AI, be part of their own life. That's what I'm telling. And I truly believe that should be the case. It's extension of our imagination. It's extension, billion times extension of our brain. Why not use it? You know, there are still some part of the world, some country, some village, with no electricity. The electricity was invented hundreds of years ago. And even today, there is a small village with no access to the electricity. What a difference in life. So if you have access to AI, this is a billion times more intelligence, you have to use it. You have to use it. This is how we will close this fantastic uh, third edition of FII in Miami. Thank you, Massa, for being with us. A round of applause for Massa Sisson. And ladies and gentlemen, we hope to see you last week of October in Riyadh. Have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you. Thank Please, you. a round of applause for Massa Sisson. Thank you.